MRL 3702, Labor Law, Chapter 3, Page 8. The Impact of the Common Law on the Contract of Employment. The Duties of the Employer and the Employee. Duties of the Employers. The duties of the employers are 1. To remunerate the employee. 2. To provide the employee with work. 3. To provide safe working conditions. 4. To deal fairly with the employee. Duties of the employee To render services to the employer To work competently and diligently 3. To obey lawful and reasonable instructions and 4. To serve the employer's interest and act in good faith, also known as a fiduciary duty. Repeat the last four. The duties of the employee. One, to render services to the employer. Two, to work competently and diligently. 3. To obey lawful and reasonable instructions. And 4. To serve the employer's interest and act in good faith. The Doctrine of Vicarious Liability According to this doctrine, an employer is liable for the unlawful or delictual acts of an employee performed during the course of business. The operation of this doctrine is regulated by the common law and not by employment legislation. It is based on the principle that the employer who by its profitable operation creates a risk of harm to others has to compensate those who suffer injury as a result of wrongful conduct of an employee. Repeat, it is based on the principle that the employer, who by its profitable operation, creates a risk of harm to others, has to compensate those who suffer injury as a result of the wrongful conduct of an employee. Repeat again. It is based on the principle that the employer who by its profitable operation creates a risk of harm to others and has to compensate those who suffer injury as a result of the wrongful conduct of an employee. Vicarious liability protects third parties. It does not mean the employer will have no recourse depending on the circumstances. The employer can discipline the employee for misconduct and even claim repayment in this regard. It does not mean that the employer will have no recourse 
depending on the circumstances, the employer can discipline the employee for misconduct and even claim repayment in this regard. There are three requirements that must be met for the employer to be liable for the employee's wrongful conduct. One, there must be a contract of employment. Two, the employee must have acted in the course and scope of employment. And three, the employee must have committed a delict. Repeat, there are three requirements that must be met for the employer to be liable for the employee's wrongful conduct. One, there must be a contract of employment. Two, the employee must have acted in the course and scope of employment. Three, the employee must have committed a delict. Remember that a delict by definition is a violation of the law. There are three requirements that must be met for the employer to be liable for the employee's wrongful conduct. One, there must be a contract of employment. Two, the employee must have acted in the course of and scope of employment. And three, the employee must have committed a delict. Case law. Beseda note versus, uh, Beseda note NO versus ESCOM. The employee had been provided with a truck marked as ESCOM property for the purposes of carrying out his duties. The employee had been expressly prohibited from giving lifts to any person without the permission of his superiors. The employee, however, did, did offer a lift to a hitchhiker and they were in an accident which left the hitchhiker with severe head injuries. The court held that the instruction not to carry passengers placed a limitation on the scope of employment. But the employer was not vicariously liable for the injuries sustained by the unauthorized passenger because the driver knew perfectly well he was not allowed to give lifts nor would it further his boss's affairs by doing so. The passenger's presence added nothing to the interest of the employer in the proper administration of its services. So that's Besaden Hout, N.O. versus ESCOM. The impact of the contract of employment on the employment relationship. Repeat. The impact of the contract of employment on the employment relationship. General contract principles. A contract of employment 
must meet all the requirements that the law prescribes for the conclusion of a valid contract. One, there must be an agreement between the parties. The parties to the contract must have capacity to act. Three, the agreement must be legally possible. Repeat, the agreement must be legally possible. Four, performance under the agreement must be physically possible. And five, if any formalities are prescribed for the formation of that particular type of contract, then these formalities must be satisfied. There is no formal requirement that a contract of employment must be in writing, although it is desirable for the sake of clarity and certainty. A contract of employment will therefore be valid if concluded in writing or orally, and its terms must be expressed, may be expressed tacitly or expressly. There is certain information the employer is obliged to provide the employee with in writing in terms of the basic condition of Employment Act. The full name and address of the employer. The name and occupation of the employee. The place of work. The date on which employment began. The employee's ordinary days and hours of work. The employee's wage. The rate of pay for overtime work. Any cash payments to which the employee is entitled. Any payment in kind and the value thereof. The frequency of remuneration. The leave to which the employee is entitled. The period of notice required to terminate employment. Any period of employment with a previous employer that counts towards the employee's period of employment. Repeat, any period of employment with a previous employee, employer that counts towards the employee's period of employment. And lastly, a list of any other documents that form part of the contract of employment. The employer must keep written particulars for three years after the termination of the employment contract. Repeat, the employer must keep records, written particulars, for three years after the termination of the employment contract. The employer is also required to display at the workplace a statement of the employee's rights in terms of the basic condition 
of Employment Act. In the official languages spoken in the workplace and in the prescribed form. Remedies for breach of contract. If the parties do not perform in terms of the agreement, that will constitute a breach of contract in terms of common law. Repeat, if the parties do not perform in terms of the agreement, that will constitute a breach of contract. It will constitute a breach of contract in terms of common law. In the event of breach of contract, the innocent party has a choice to either accept the breach and cancel the contract or to compel the defaulting party to perform. That's called specific performance. Repeat, in the event of breach of contract, the innocent party has a choice to either accept the breach and cancel the contract or compel the defaulting party to perform, which is called specific performance. In addition, the innocent party can claim damages. The Labor Relations Act largely replaced the process provided for by contract law. In terms of the Labor Relations Act, a breach by the employer would probably amount to unfair labor practice, unfair discrimination or unfair dismissal. Repeat, in terms of the Labor Relations Act, a breach by the employer would probably amount to unfair labor practice, unfair discrimination or unfair dismissal. If the employee breaches a contract, it would probably amount to misconduct. Repeat, if the employee employee breaches the contract, it would probably amount to misconduct. Should a claim be based on breach of contract or unfair dismissal? If an employee were to claim breach of contract, the High Court and not the Labor Court will have jurisdiction and only common law remedies will be available. Repeat, if an employee were to claim breach of contract, the High Court and not the Labor Court will have jurisdiction and only common law remedies will be available. Repeat, if an employee were to claim breach of contract, the High Court and not the Labor Court will have jurisdiction and only common law remedies will be available. Only common law remedies will be available. Such termination will then deal with unlawfulness and not fairness. Such termination will deal with unlawfulness and not fairness. Such termination will deal with unlawfulness and not fairness.
not fairness. It is safe to state that an employer, employee can still choose to claim common law damages based on breach of contract rather than to claim unfair dismissal in terms of the Labor Relations Act. Repeat, it is safe to state that an employee can still choose to claim common law damages based on breach of contract rather than to claim unfair dismissal in terms of the Labor Relations Act. Repeat once more. It is safe to state that an employee can still choose to claim common law damages based on breach of contract rather than to claim unfair dismissal in terms of the Labor Relations Act. This is the result of Section 23.1 of the Constitution, which guarantees everyone the right to fair labor practices. And this was confirmed by Old Mutual Life Insurance Co. versus Gumby, G-U-M-B-I. And Boxer, Superstores, Mathatha, and another versus Mbenya. Repeat, this is the result of Section 23 of the Constitution, which guarantees everyone the right to fair labor practices. Confirmed in Old Mutual Life Assurance Co. S.A. versus Gumby. And Boxer Superstores Mthatha and another versus Mbenya. So let's repeat again. It is safe to state that an employee can choose to claim common law damages based on breach of contract rather than to claim unfair dismissal in terms of the Labor Relations Act. This is a result of Section 23.1 of the Constitution which guarantees everyone the right to fair labor practices. Restraint of trade. Example. The employee herewith agrees that for a period of three months after the termination of employment with the employer, the company, he will not accept employment with any competitor of the employer within a 20 kilometer radius of the premises of the employer. A restraint clause is normally included in employment contracts to protect the interest of the employer. The purpose of a restraint of trade agreement is to protect the employer's trade secrets, goodwill and business. It prevents the employee from competing with his or her employer within a defined area for a prescribed period. A court will balance the following. The public interest, which requires parties to comply with contractual obligations, 
even if these are unreasonable or unfair, versus the right of all persons to be permitted as far as possible to engage in commerce or professions of their own choice. Repeat, it prevents the employee from competing with his or her employer within a defined area for a prescribed period. A court will balance the following. The public interest, which requires parties to comply with contractual obligations, even if these are unreasonable or unfair. The public interest which requires parties to comply with contractual obligations even if these are unreasonable or unfair versus the right of all persons to be permitted as far as possible to engage in commerce or the professions of their choice. The right of all persons to be permitted as far as possible to engage in commerce or the professions of their choice. Case Law Magna Alloys Research S.A. versus Ellis. Repeat. Magna Alloys Research versus Ellis. The court had to balance the competing interest of the employer and the employee. It held that a restraint of trade agreement is valid and enforceable unless it is contrary to public policy, which it will be if it is unreasonable. Repeat. It held that a restraint of trade agreement is valid and enforceable unless it is contrary to public policy, which it will be if it is unreasonable. So if it's unreasonable, it will be contrary to public policy. Reasonableness will be determined with reference to the interest of both the employer and the employee, public policy and surrounding circumstances. Repeat, reasonableness will be determined with reference to the interest of both the employer and the employee, public policy and surrounding circumstances. Repeat again, reasonableness will be determined with reference to the interest of both the employer and employee, public policy 
and surrounding circumstances. This is to do with the case Magna Alloys Research and it's related to a restraint of trade. Questions that should be considered in determining reasonableness are, for example, is there an interest deserving of protection at the termination of the agreement? Repeat, questions that should be considered in determining reasonableness are, for example, is there an interest deserving at the termination of an agreement? Is that interest being prejudiced? If so, how does that interest weigh up against the interest of the other party not to work? Repeat. If so, how does that interest weigh up against the interest of the other party not going to work? If so, how does that interest weigh up against the interest of the other party not to work? Is there another facet of public policy, apart from the relationship between the parties, which requires that the restraint should either be enforced or disallowed? Repeat. Is there another facet of public policy? Is there another facet of public policy? Apart from the relationship between part parties, which requires that the restraint should either be enforced or disallowed. And lastly, is the restraint wider than is necessary to protect the protectable interest? Is the restraint wider than is necessary to protect the protectable interest. For example, if the employer unlawfully terminates the contract of employment containing a restraint of a restraint to trade clause, that clause should not be allowed to benefit. Repeat. If an employer unlawfully terminates a contract of employment containing a restraint of trade clause, that clause should not be allowed to benefit. MRL 3702 Page 11. Changes to contractual terms and conditions. An employer may not unilaterally change the con terms and conditions of employment. It can only be done in the following ways. 1. By agreement between the employer and employee or in line with the method described in the contract of employment. So there's got to be agreement between the employer and employee or in line with the method described in the contract of employment. Number two. By means of collective agreement between the employer and the trade union. Repeat. By means of collective agreement between the employer 
and the trade union. By operation of law. For example, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. And lastly, through sectoral determination by the minister. Through sectoral determination by the minister. By operation of law, for example, the Basic Condition of Employment Act and through sectoral determination by the minister. Customs and practices in the workplace. Examples, afternoon off, a social visit to a historical site or a Christmas party. The employer does not have to obtain agreement from its employees to implement or change these. Repeat, the employer does not have to obtain agreement from its employees to implement or change these. Basic Conditions of Employment Act, Chapter 4. This is now on page 12. The Basic Conditions of Employment Act, Chapter 4. Acts which all impact on the employer-employee relationship. The BCEA, which regulates the terms and conditions of employment. The BCEA. The EEA, which prohibits discrimination and promotes affirmative action. The LRA, which deals with unfair labor practices. Social security legislation provides employees with entitlements to employment insurance, which involves contributions by employees. The SDA and SDLA, which regulate skill and training of employees and involve contributions by employers. The SDA and SDLA, which regulate skill and training of employees and involve contributions by employers. The Basic Condition of Employment Act the BCEA must be read in conjunction with the determinations and the collective agreement to determine an employee's terms and conditions. Repeat, the BCEA must be read in conjunction with the determinations and collective agreement to determine an employee's terms and conditions. As a general rule, employers and employees may deviate from these minimum terms and conditions only to improve them for employees but not decrease them. A basic condition of employment in the BCEA constitutes a 
ter- a term of any contract of employment except where any other law provides a term more favorable to an employee. Repeat, a basic condition of employment in the BCEA constitutes a term of any contract of employment except where one, any other law provides a term more favorable to an employee, two, the contract provides a more favorable term to the employee or the basic condition has been replaced varied or excluded in terms of the act. Generally then, employers may not contract outside of the BCEA. Only in limited circumstances will employers and employees be able to agree the terms and conditions less favorable than those prescribed by the BCEA. Repeat, only in limited circumstances will employers and employees be able to agree to terms and conditions less favorable than those prescribed by the BCEA. So in other words, it is possible, but it's extremely rare to negotiate conditions less favorable as prescribed by the BCEA. Scope of application. In essence, the BCEA gives effect to and regulates the constitutional rights to fair labor practices. In order to do this, the Act, one, establishes and enforces the basic conditions of employment. To do this, it establishes and enforces the basic conditions of employment regulates the variation of such conditions by way of various mechanisms and within the framework of regulated flexibility. It regulates the variation of such conditions by way of various mechanisms and within the framework of regulated flexibility. The basic condition of Employment Act is applicable to almost all employees. However, certain employees are excluded from the basic condition of Employment Act. They are members of the National Intelligence Agency, members of the South African Secret Service, Members of the South African National Academy of Intelligence. Directors and staff of COMSEC. Unpaid volunteers working for charitable organizations. People undergoing vocational training, except to the extent that and term of their employment is regulated by the provisions of any other law. People employed on vessels at sea and independent contractors. Repeat the last three. People undergoing vocational training, except to the extent that terms of the employment is regulated by provisions of any other law. People employed on vessels at sea and independent contractors. Partial exclusions from the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Partial exclusions. Senior managerial employees are excluded 
from Chapter 2 of the BCEA. And employees who work less than 24 hours a month are excluded from Chapter 2 of the BCEA. The minimum conditions of employment. Working time. Chapter 2 of the BCEA does not apply to senior managerial employees, staff who travel to the premises of customers and regulate their, and regulate their hours of work, employees who work less than 24 hours a, m- a month for an employer and employees who earn more than 172,000 rand per annum. Maximum working hours. The maximum of 45 hours per week. If an employee works five days a week or less, he may not work more than nine hours a day. If an employee works six or more a week, he or she may not work more than eight hours a day. The, these include an hour lunch break. Additional comments. Employers are required to endeavor to reduce the maximum hours to 40 hours a week and 8 hours a day through collective bargaining and sectorial determinations. See section 9.3 and schedule 1 of the BCEA. These hours may be extended by agreement to 15 hours a day, but no more than an hour per week. If employees serve members of the public. Lunch. An employee is entitled to a meal interval of at least one hour of it after five hours of continuous work. The meal interval can, by agreement, be reduced so notice by agreement be be reduced to 30 minutes or be done away with if the employee works fewer than 6 hours a day overtime a maximum of 10 hours per week these may increase to a maximum of 15 hours by a collective agreement. Maximum 10 hours a week, which can increase to 15 by collective agreement. An employee may work overtime only by agreement. An employee working overtime has to be paid one and a half times normal pay or have time off. An agreement to work overtime may not be for more than a total of 12 hours. Ordinary hours plus overtime on any particular day. Repeat, an agreement to work overtime may not be more than a total of 12 hours, which is ordinary hours plus overtime, on any particular day. Sundays and public holidays. The employee has to be paid double the normal rate of pay. If the employee normally works on Sundays, the employee has to be paid one and a half times the normal rate. 
So it's one and a half times the normal rate if the if the employee work, work normally works on Sundays, the employee has to be paid one and a half times the normal rate. The employee has to be paid double if they work on a Sunday. The same principle and payment scale to work performed on a public holiday. In other words, whatever is done on a Sunday, you can apply it to a public holiday. Night work. Employee must be given an allowance or a reduction of hours work and be provided with transport between the employee's place of residence and the workplace. Repeat. Night work. The employee must be given the employee must be given an allowance or a reduction in hours of work or be allowed uh, sorry and be allowed be provided with transport between the employee's place of residence and workplace night work is performed after 6 p.m. and before 6 AM so it's between 6 and 6. It can only be worked in terms of an agreement. You can't be forced to work at night if you don't agree to it. Rest periods. An employee is entitled to a daily rest period of 12 hours between the ending and recommencing work and a weekly rest period of at least 36 consecutive hours, which generally has to include Sundays. The Basic Conditions of Employment Act makes provision for, the da for daily and weekly rest periods. Compressed Work Week Parties may agree that the employee will work up to 12 hours a day, including a meal interval, without receiving overtime pay. Repeat. Parties may agree that the employee will work up to 12 hours a day, including a meal interval without receiving overtime pay, provided that the employee does not work more than 45 hours a week, more than 10 hours overtime in any week, on more than 5 days a week. Ordinary hours and overtime can be averaged over a period of up to four months in terms of a collective agreement. Averaging of working hours and overtime is allowed where hours are calculated over a period of time. The averaging of working hours and over time is allowed where hours are calculated over a period of time. This is to cater for peak periods in certain sectors. For example, agriculture, where during harvest time employees may agree to, to extend hours of overtime to a maximum of 15 hours per week. But after harvesting time, this will no longer be necessary. 
Chapter 3 of the Basic Condition of Employment Act does not, does not apply to employees who work less than 24 hours a month. Notice, 24 hours a month for an employer. Vacation leave. A minimum of 21 consecutive calendar days paid vacation leave, excluding public holidays per year for most employees. This will amount to 15 working days. Employers and employees may agree on additional leave, either paid or unpaid. Maternity leave. An employee is entitled to four consecutive months maternity leave, which may commence at any time from four weeks before the expected date of birth. Before the expected date of birth or on a date that a medical practitioner or midwife certifies that it is necessary for the employee's health or her un- unborn child. The employee must notify the employer in writing of the dates that she intends to take the employee must notify the employer of the dates that she intends to take. This is unpaid leave. Maternity leave is unpaid leave in terms of the basic condition of employment act. The BCEA sets the minimum but parties can also agree to more favorable terms. For example, paid maternity leave. If an employer employee is not paid, she may claim UIF. She may claim UIF. Okay? So if she doesn't get a maternity benefit, she may claim UIF. If an employee miscarries in the third trimester of her pregnancy or has a stillborn child, she is entitled to six weeks of leave after the miscarriage or stillbirth. Six weeks of maternity leave if she has a miscarriage. Or stillbirth. Family responsibility leave. An employee is entitled to three days family responsibility leave for every 12 months worked. Three days responsibility leave, family responsibility leave. Three days for every 12 months worked for every 12 months worked and it's only for employees who have worked for longer than four months and who work at least four days a week family responsibility leave may be taken when an employee's child is born or is sick, or in the event of the death of the employee's spouse, life partner, parent, adoptive grand, uh, adoptive parent, grandparent, child, adopted child, grandchild, or sibling. The interpretation is strict. For example, no provision is made for leave to be taken in the event of the death of 
in-laws. Sick leave. Six weeks paid leave in every three-year cycle worked. If an employee has been absent from work for more than two consecutive days or on more than two occasions in an eight-week period, the employer may request the may request the employee to submit a medical certificate. Such certificate may be issued by a medical doctor or person registered with the professional council. A leave cycle is calculated as the number of days an employee would normally work during a six-week cycle. If an employee works five days a week, he or she would work 30 days in six weeks, and that would entitle him to 30 days sick leave in a th- in three years. MRL 3702, page 15 of the summary, continuing with the basic conditions of Employment Act. Wages. Neither the basic condition of Employment Act nor any other law stipulates minimum wages for employees. Repeat, neither the BCEA nor any other law stipulates minimum wages for employees. However, collective agreements concluded in bargaining councils and ministerial and sectorial determinations may establish minimum wages and employers and employees will be bound to contract in terms of these minimum standards. Employees must be paid in South African currency either daily, weekly, fortnightly or monthly and in cash by check or by direct deposit into a bank account of the employee. Repeat, employees must be paid in South African currency. Notice, South African currency, daily, weekly, fortnightly or monthly and in cash by check or direct deposit into bank account of the employee. The employer must provide the employee with information regarding the period for which payment is made, the amount of pay, the amount and reasons for any deduction that is made in the calculation of the employee's pay in general. Repeat, the employer must provide the employee with information in writing regarding the period for which payment is made, the period for which payment is made, the amount of pay, the amount and reasons for any deduction that is made in the calculation of the employee's pay in general. The Basic Condition of Employment Act provides that a contract of employment must be terminated in writing and by way of notice period no less than one week if the employee has been employed 
for six months or less. So it's one week for six months or less. Two weeks if the employee has been employed between six and between six months and one year. So between six months and a year. Notice period. Two weeks. Four weeks if the employee has been employed for one year or more or is a farm worker or domestic worker who has been employed for more than six months. Repeat, four weeks if the employee has been employed for more than one year and, or is a farm worker or a domestic servant or domestic worker who has been employed for more than six months. So it's only the domestic worker and the farm worker that's exempt from the one year period. Otherwise, everyone else, if you're employed for more than a year, four weeks notice. A period of four weeks may be shortened to two weeks by collective agreement. Repeat, a period of four weeks can be shortened to two weeks by collective agreement. In addition, the Basic Condition of Employment Act allows an employer to pay an employee an amount equivalent to the salary that the employee would have earned during the notice period instead of requiring the employee to work such period. Repeat. In addition, the BCEA allows an employer to pay an employee an amount equivalent to the salary that the employee would have earned during the notice period instead of requiring the employee to work such period. Page 16. Severance pay. When an employee is dismissed based on operational requirements, based on operational requirements of the employer in terms of the Labor Relations Act. The employer must pay the employee severance equal to at least one week's pay for each completed year of continuous service with the employer. Repeat, when an employee is dismissed based on operational requirements of the employer in terms of the Labor Relations Act, the employer must pay the employee severance equal to one week's pay for each completed year of continuous service with the employer. An employee who, re, who unreasonably refuses to accept an offer of alternative employment. Notice, who unreasonably refuses 
to accept an offer of alternative employment with that employer. With that employer. Or any other employer is not entitled. Is not entitled to the severance pay. Right? Let's repeat. An employer, an employee who reasonably refuses to accept an offer of alternative employment with that employer or any other employer is not entitled to severance pay. Certificate of Service An employer is required to provide an employee with a certificate of service when employment comes to an end. Such certificate may state, amongst other things, the date of commencement of work, the job description, and the remuneration at the time of termination. The reason for termination of employment may be stated only at the employee's request. Repeat. The reason for termination of employment may be stated only at the employee's request. Children and forced labor. Children and forced labor. The Basic Conditions of Employment Act prohibits the employment of children under the age of 15, which is the minimum school leaving age. No children under 15 may be employed. No children under 15 may be employed. Contravention of this section constitutes a criminal offence. So it's a criminal offence to employ children under the age of 15. Children younger than children younger than 15 years are allowed to perform in advertising, sporting, artistic and cultural activities, but only in terms of regulations issued by the minister or ministerial or sectorial determination. So children Younger than 15 years, children younger than 15 years are allowed to perform in advertising, sporting, artistic and cultural activities. But only in terms of regulations issued by the minister or the ministerial or sectorial determination. Example, the sectorial determination 10, children in the performance of advertising, artistic and cultural activities provide that a permit must be obtained, a permit must be obtained from the Department of Labor to employ these children in the following circumstances. Further, remuneration must be paid to the parent or guardian of the child. So remuneration must be paid to the parent or the guardian of the child. 
the maximum hours of work per day. It's four hours a day for a child aged over 10 and three hours a day for a child younger than 10. Repeat, maximum hours of work per day, maximum hours, maximum hours of work per day is four hours a day for a child over 10, four hours for a child over 10, and three hours a day for a child Younger than 10. So over 10, over 10, maximum hours, 4 hours. Under 10, maximum hours, 3 hours. Rest periods must be provided for after 2 hours of continuous work. Rest periods must be provided after two hours of continuous work for children older than 10 years or after one and a half hours of continuous work for children younger than 10. For children younger than 10, after one and a half hours of continuous work, they must get a break. For children older than 10, they must get a break after two hours of continuous work. Those are for children older than 10. Okay? Nutritious food and drink must be provided. Nutritious food and drink must be provided. Safe areas must be provided for the children to rest and play. Safe areas must be provided for the children to rest and play. And lastly, Safe trans transport must be provided between the child's home and workplace. Safe transport to be provided between the child's home and workplace. Forced labor is prohibited under the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Contravention of this section constitutes a criminal offense. Enforcement of the Basic Condition of Employment Act The Courts The Labour Court has concurrent jurisdiction with the civil courts to hear and decide any matters regarding the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. The Labour Court has wide powers to enforce the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, such as making compliance orders and issuing fines. Repeat, the Labour Court has wide powers to enforce the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, such as making compliance orders and issuing fines. Repeat again, the Labour Court has wide powers to enforce the Basic Condition of Employment Act such as making compliance orders and issuing fines. Page 17. Inspectors. The, base, the Basic Condition of Employment Act provides for the appointment of labor inspectors who must monitor and enforce compliance with the Basic Condition of Employment Act and other employing employment laws the basic condition 
of Employment Act provides for the appointment of labor inspectors who must monitor and enforce compliance with the Basic Condition of Employment Act and other employment laws. Inspectors may, amongst other things, enter workplaces, require a person to disclose relevant information, question employers and employees, inspect documents and records, obtain in writing, undertaking from an employer, in default, it will comply with the provisions of the Basic Condition of Employment Act. Repeat, inspectors may, amongst other things, enter workplaces, require a person to disclose relevant information, question employers and employees, question employers and employees, inspect documents and records, inspect documents and records, obtain in writing an undertaking from an employer in default it will comply with the provisions of the Basic Condition of Employment Act. If the employer refuses or neglects to comply with such an undertaking, a compliance order may be issued. Repeat, if the employer refuses or neglects to comply with such an undertaking, a compliance order may be issued. If the employer still does not comply, an order may be obtained by the Labour Court. Repeat, if the employer still does not comply, an order may be obtained from the Labour Court. Variation of basic condition. Variation of the basic conditions. The basic conditions of Employment Acts Act allows some terms and conditions of employment to be varied and does so in different ways. However, core terms cannot be varied at all and they are the maximum working hours maximum working hours cannot be varied maximum working hours cannot be varied two provisions relating to night work provisions relating to night work. Provisions relating to sick leave. Provisions relating to sick leave. And also not less than two weeks of annual leave. You can't reduce the two weeks of annual leave. You can't reduce the four months of maternity leave. The provisions relating to sick leave can't reduce. And provisions relating to night work. As well as maximum working hours. Remember this is all on page 16, 17 of the summary. The variation by way of collective agreement. A collective agreement between trade unions and employers 
may change working conditions of work, provided such collective agreement is consistent with the purposes of the Act. Repeat. A collective agreement between trade unions and employers may change conditions of work. It may change the conditions of work. Provided such collective agreement is consistent with the purposes of the Act. It may replace or exclude basic conditions of employment only to the extent permitted by the Act or a sectorial determination. Variation by way of ministerial determination. Variation by way of ministerial determination. A ministerial determination primarily replaces or excludes basic minimum conditions of employment in respect of any category of employees or categories of employers but generally does not set minimum wages. Repeat. A ministerial determination primarily replaces or excludes basic minimum conditions of employment in respect of any category of employees or categories of employers, but generally does not set minimum wages. Such determinations may vary may vary maximum ordinary weekly hours. Repeat again. The variation by way of ministerial determination. A ministerial determination primarily replaces or excludes basic minimum conditions of employment in respect of any category of employees or categories of employers, but generally does not set minimum wages. Such determinations may vary maximum ordinary weekly hours. Such determinations may vary maximum ordinary weekly hours if 1. The determination has been agreed to in a collective agreement. The determination has been agreed to in a collective agreement. 2. The operational requirements of the sector necessitates this. Or 3. The majority of employees are not members of a registered trade union. Majority of the employees are not members of a registered trade union. A ministerial determination may relate to hours of work, overtime, meal intervals, daily and weekly rest periods, and annual leave. Repeat. A ministerial, a ministerial determination may relate to hours of work, overtime, meal intervals, daily and weekly rest periods, and annual leave, but must be on the whole more favorable to employees than those conditions set out in the Basic Condition of Employment Act. 
ministerial determinations exist for the special public's work program, small businesses, and welfare sector, which are typically unionized. These determinations do not have uh, these determinations have not introduced min- minimum wages. Variation by way of sectoral determination. Another way of establishing conditions of employment is by way of sectoral determination by the minister in terms of the Basic Condition of Employment Act. Repeat, another way of establishing conditions of employment by way of sectoral determination is by by the Minister in terms of the Basic Condition of Employment Act. Such determination primarily establishes and regulates minimum wages, but could also include other conditions of employment. Repeat, such determination primarily establishes and regulates minimum wages, but could also include other conditions of employment. Point one, such as a determination, such a determination may be made only after an investigation has been done by the Director General of the Department of Labor at the initiative of the Minister or as requested by an employer's or employee's organization into a particular sector or area for consideration of representations by the public. Moreover, the Employment Conditions Commission, the Employment Conditions Commission has to advise The Minister on a range of factors. The Employment Conditions Commission must advise the Minister on a range of factors which will impact on the specific sector and area, such as the ability of employers in their businesses to succeed Um, in their businesses successfully the impact on specific sector and area such as the ability of employers to carry in their businesses successfully the operation of small medium macro and new enterprises the cost of living the alleviation of poverty inequality in wages and the likely impact of the determination on current and future employment. Repeat, moreover, the Employment Conditions Commission has to advise the Minister on a range of factors which will impact on the specific sector and area such as the ability of employers to carry in their businesses successfully, the operation of small, medium, macro, and new enterprises, the cost of living, the alleviation of poverty, inequality in wages and the likely impact of the determination on current and future employment. 
a sectoral determination may relate to ordinary hours of work overtime meals intervals daily and weekly rest periods and annual leave repeat a sectoral determination may relate to ordinary work hours meal uh, ordinary work hours of work overtime meal intervals daily and weekly rest periods and annual leave but must on the whole be more favorable to employees than those conditions set out in the BCEA they must be more favorable than the to employees than the conditions set out in the BCEA a sectoral determination may not reduce the protection for night work and maternity leave it may vary ordinary hours for work only if repeat a sectoral determination may not reduce the protection for night work and maternity leave a sectoral determination may not reduce the protection for night work and maternity leave it may vary ordinary working hours only if so only if the determination has been agreed to in a collective agreement so there must be a collective agreement the operational requirements of the sector necessitate this the operational requirements of the sector necessitate this and the majority of employees are not members of a registered trade union repeat the determination has been agreed to in a collective agreement the operational requirements of the sector necessitate this or the majority of employees are not members of a registered trade union minimum wages and conditions set out in sectoral determination will apply to the contract of employment between the employer and employee minimum wages and conditions set out in a sectoral determination will determine a uh, sectoral determination will apply to the contract of employment between the employer and employee repeat the minimum wages the minimum wages and conditions set out in the sectoral determination set out in the sectoral determination will apply to the contract of employment will apply to the contract of employment between the employer and employee examples of sectoral determinations are found in farming private security and contract cleaning as well as the industry of hospitality and taxi and domestic workers sectors some with different minimum wages for urban and rural areas and on a sliding scale these are all sectors that are not well organized and not capable of effective collective bargaining so these all of these sectors are not well organized and are not capable of effective collective bargaining the examples of sectoral determinations are found in farming private security contract cleaning the industry of hospitality taxi and domestic workers sectors some of some with different wages for urban and rural areas and on a sliding scale minimum wages 
in these determinations are generally amended annually to keep abreast at least of inflation.